All right, we're here with, uh, this is Lisa Freecroft Live. I'm Kevin Stewart Swain, and your host, Lisa Freecroft, is sitting everybody. right here. And we have Kenny Shields on the line from Streetheart. Hi. Hey, Kenny, it's great to have you on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's really, uh, really good to have you guys, uh, um, well, speaking with me. <laughs> <laughs> you had planned this for, what, about a week? Yeah, a friend of uh, Lisa's uh, put you in touch with us, and, it, and it's so great. We, we're just uh, chuffed. We've been uh, telling everybody that we're going to interview Kenny Shields. So hopefully, uh, I know I know it's going to be a big show when you're on. Everybody's going to be listening. Well, good. I, I'm uh, I'm very pleased to hear that. And uh, I'd like to say hello to everybody that's listening then. Cool. How the heck are you guys? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> we're doing good. We're, we're having a crazy, like... I mean, what we're we're thinking it's cold out here, but nothing like what what you're used to. Yeah, well, uh, that's uh, you got that right. Um, but you know, people say, "Well, why do you live here?" And I say, "Well, uh, if you don't ask ask me that question, I don't have to answer it." <laughs> well, and, because and, and, I don't I don't really have a good answer other than the fact that I fell in love and uh, uh, I, I, I lived here most of my life and. Uh, I got uh, children's children now, you know, so uh, I'm uh, pretty much pretty much kaput for a while. And this is Winnipeg, correct? This is Winnipeg, correct? Yes. Because yeah. <laughs> um, I, 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 what I loved about Winnipeg, because I used to play out there so much in in the '80s that when I played in my own hometown, they would bill us as from Winnipeg. <laughs> cause they, oh yeah. They actually <clears throat> we we're from there, but I thought it was a great place. I know it's cool. Well, and there's big freaking flies in the summer, but it, music. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was yes, if you're not careful, they'll carry you away. Yeah, flies. But I mean, a great, uh, great music town, and the amount of incredible musicians that have come out of Winnipeg. Wow. Yeah, um, it, 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 speaking about the '80s, uh, it certainly was a phenomenal time. '60s, '70s, '80s. Uh, you know, starting with the Guess Who. Uh, it doesn't get any better than that on the international scale. And then Backman Turner and uh, guys like uh, my, ourselves and Harlequin and uh, Gettysburg Address in the old days, Witness Incorporated. Um, you know, it's it's not exactly that exuberant these days because music and, and the industry has changed so much. But it certainly has has ground out a, a wonderful history that most people like yourselves can still speak about fondly and uh, remember those times, you know. I mean, uh, a lot of our other people that work with or that come to visit Kenny Shields and Street Art are, are fans from uh, 30, 35 years ago. You know? Yeah. And uh, they range from, uh, when we play casinos, we have the... Uh, we have the more elderly crowd, crowd that grew up with us, and it's really wonderful. And then we play the clubs, so we get a, a demographic change from anywhere from 60 to 18. And, uh, you know, that's just phenomenal. And, uh, it is something. Uh, yeah, our fan base is, is very strong, and it continues to be so. So I'm very grateful for that. And, I'm, and I, I, I say every night when I, when I gig that I, I appreciate the many, many years of support. And that goes uh, where that goes wherever I go. So, so you're happy? Um, are you in a happy place? Like, like you wouldn't change anything, kind of thing. As far as me? um, yeah, I, I think that's. I think I am. Um, maybe I would change the weather a little. Um, <laughs> but but uh, no, I'm uh, I'm I'm happy. I, I work with a great bunch of guys. Uh, we have uh, we have certainly enough work to abide us. Over the year, and uh, we have a lot of time off too. Uh, you know, I've got a, a new solo record, which is the first one I've done in my life. So when you can do something for the first time at my age, that's pretty exciting. Yeah, and and so great. And and the the cool thing, one of the many cool things about Street Heart, in my opinion, th this is what separates the men from the boys. For me, you guys did covers, and you didn't just cover them. I mean, you made them your own, and you did a fair number. Like you did, wasn't Tin Soldier a Small Faces tune? And yes, Tin Soldier was a Steve Marriott composition uh, from Small Faces, and of course, Under My Thumb was the Stones, and uh, Here Comes a Night was a Van Morrison, right? Uh, a, group, a group called them. Yeah, um, 
I, I don't know whether it started out. To, there's no plan to do that. It's just the way the development happened, you know. Yeah, and, and he, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I've been, I've been tin soldier. Uh, I, I did way back in the '60s when uh, when it was a hit, and uh, then of course you drop it for a, a mere thirty years, and uh, <laughs> and then all of a sudden it comes back into the. Well, actually, it was one of my guys that said, why don't we try Tin Soldier, Kenny? I said, geez, I haven't sang that song in years. And I know I struggled with it back then, but it was easier to sing this time. So oh, <laughs> I guess yeah. that's a development. Pardon let's, me? Let's spin that right now. Okay. We'll put on Tin Soldier because I always love that tune. Okay, great. All right. So that was Tin Soldier, Small Faces tune. And what that brings me to is you had you did you did an amazing thing with under my thumb what you did and what spider did to that tune i'm a bass player and spider's a god to me um, yeah so wow uh well you know it, it, that started out as a song that um we were we were writing the first album and we uh, actually we were just writing to uh we were writing meanwhile back in paris and uh we only had so much original material so we all got to choose a song of one of our favorite groups. Uh, I'm a big phone, a big Stones fan, so it wasn't difficult for me. And I loved, I loved the album Aftermath, and I loved Under My Thumb, and I still do love the Stones. I love to hear that. But anyway, with uh, with Thumb, it just became a development. As we played, we learned that we could open with it, or uh, play it in the middle of the set, or close with an encore, and it always seemed to work. So we decided that it might be a good idea. Especially our A and R guys from uh, from Warner Brothers said it would be a good idea to maybe record that, place it on the already Under Heaven Over Hell album, which was already released. So it's it's a good thing we did because uh, it moved us double platinum, and it moved us into the top five in Canadian music. And uh, for that, we've always been kind of grateful. Yeah, and you know it's a but, but, of, of blowing. Not like I'm not blowing smoke here. Like I, I, I don't do this lightly. But I kind of prefer your version to the Stones version. Like, like you know. <clears throat> well, there's a great many people that don't know of, of the original version in the first first place. And when a, when they do uh, a b it, they decided they like ours better. Of course, I'm biased. I like uh, the Stones, but I also like what, what we did. Um, you know, and I said the guys like. Um, you know, uh, just just the musicianship. Uh, Matt Fernet, Spider Seneve, Joe Gutile, you know, Paul Dean, John, John Hanna. It, it, Paul Dean, John Hanna. It's just one of those developing things that just caught fire, and, and everybody. It was kind of like a challenge for each one. Every time we we go out and play, we'd see where we could take it from there, and it developed into like a ten piece, or I mean, I'm sorry, a ten minute piece, ten minute song. Oh. And uh, we decided when we to record it, we recorded exactly like that. Some stations cut things out and play it as an as a single, but uh, we recorded it as a I believe I don't know eight to ten minutes, whatever it was. Yeah, but, uh, it's uh, it really it really works, you know. I hear a lot I hear it a lot of times, and uh, it's just one of those things that you're the people really relate to the band. You mentioned the song, they go, oh yeah. I know you guys. Yeah. Or mention us and they go, oh, yeah, thumb. You know? Yeah. Well, well, we'll play that one right now, too. All right. Good. So that was under my thumb. And, and, and I don't want to do any more covers because you guys are incredible writers. And I wanted to ask you, um, who was the principal writer? Was that kind of shared? Um, <clears throat> Paul was the principal writer. And uh, I... I I, I got to write a lot of lyrics with uh, with Paul Dean mm -hmm. on on Meanwhile Back in Paris, uh, but you know we all contributed. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, and as as we developed more, Spider became a writer, uh, Daryl became a writer, and uh, I just continued on with my mediocrity. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what that I have to ask you then when Paul left with Matt to form Loverboy and mm -hmm. and I assume I, 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 I gotta assume he was trying to take Spider too was, was that a bit of a mutiny or was that lovingly done was it cool or was it ugly um well that, no it wasn't it, it, it wasn't cool <laughs> yeah um it wasn't ugly either it was just uh, uh something that that 
that happened, you know. Yeah. Um, it's a, it was an unfortunate act because if I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't I wouldn't be a part of it, you know. Yeah. But um, a lot of it had to do with management and uh, just uh, controversial between management and guys like Paul. Uh, actually, Matt Matt left a year later oh, okay. after Paul. So oh, it wasn't oh really yeah, like right, yeah, right. The yeah. formation of, of Loverboy instantly it was a development over a couple of years. Right. Yeah, because Bernie Aubin actually I think was the original Loverboy drummer. Uh yeah yeah that's right and I uh, I think Matt was the original drummer for, for Hinton, Hinton. So, yeah <laughs> so that that was kind of a flip flop you know but, you know it's to me to, from a distance it looked a bit mutinous and 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 when I hear a song like Turn Me Loose I hear action and it's like oh yeah you no, know I don't, I don't think there's any question about that and I don't, I don't think there's any hiding that the fact that uh, you know Paul was a major writer in, in action and uh, just to start out the way. Turn Me Loose does, you can tell, you know, he went for a new audience, and he got the new audience in in America, and they did extremely well with that song, and and The Kid Is Hot Tonight off the first album, and then they uh, they just took it from there, so they had a, a tremendous success yeah. in the States, where, whereas we did, and we didn't quite get there, you know. No, and it's a shame, it's, it's a shame, because it, like, we were talking about Loverboy versus Streetheart. Funny, I was talking mm. with uh, Ray Roper's bass player, and um, and we're and we're saying we prefer Streetheart because as musicians too, it's it's such intricate, well played music and and so creative and interesting. And your voice is so recognizable. It, it's like Absolutely. you sing whatever you sing. I love I love it already just because you're singing it. Before <laughs> <I'm trying> to- <laughs> thank you, I really do. I just love your voice and. And Thank then, you very much. Appreciate that. I guess I guess I'm 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 a lucky guy. I, I've had this voice a long time, and I decided a long a long time ago that I would make some changes in my life and and try to keep that voice and hang on to that voice as long. As yeah, can, you know. Um, somebody's calling me. Don't worry about it. Okay. If I disappear or pop out, I'll come right back. Okay. Anyway, um, so I, I guess I guess. Uh, I guess what I'm saying is, um, is that uh, it, it's interesting. Uh, Spider is now playing with Loverboy. Yeah, yeah. Because of Scott Smith's un- unfortunate tragedy. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, uh, we're 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 all kind of brothers in arms in our in the in in, in the instrumental way. Mm-hmm. Um, we just ran into each other in the airport in Edmonton uh, on on Sunday, and all sat around and. <laughs> so some pretty incredible stories and memories, yeah. you know. So <laughs> because everybody, everybody is. I remember standing in a bar in Vancouver with Bernie Aubin when I was just a punk kid, and he was always good to me. And he's going, you know, I was supposed to be on the plane there to join Streetheart two hours ago or something. Oh, why didn't you do it? I don't know. I don't. Did he ever show? I don't up? know. <laughs> there, was there a time when you, did he ever show up? <laughs> Probably no. He, he did. Uh, he did later on, but uh, boy, oh boy, I'll tell you, he was uh, pretty late. And I guess he was just nervous about the situation. You know, he was nervous about it. He figured maybe I can't cut the gig, so he missed the plane deliberately. And uh, he's probably sitting in a bar yeah, I was having a few drinks. <laughs> Another, but another, he did. He did eventually. Uh, he did eventually show up. And, well, dude, uh, I was encouraging him to because I love Streetheart. I'm like, are you kidding, man? Yeah. <laughs> well, he just wanted to make sure he could cut it, you know. And uh, because, like I said, it's a very intricate. You know, Spider and Matt were writing some incredible music back then. Mm-hmm. Some incredible music, you know, that you'll hear on Meanwhile. Uh, you'll hear on Meanwhile back in Paris. I mean, yeah, the parts, like the album. parts that they wrote. They were just spawning each other, and it was uh, it's phenomenal. It's it's a classic LP. I think it'll be around a long, long, long time. When you were recording Action, because I was mm-hmm. playing a room in Winnipeg, I think it's called the Marlboro, and it was like someone to do with your band that was running it. And uh, he said when you guys were doing Action, there was air conditioning on in the studio, and you found out after that the whole track was sharp, like that incredible bass line that just couldn't had to be was actually sharp and the whole band went sharp to that track? Do you ever hear it? Um, um, you know what? I don't remember that. Yeah. 
It's funny. Some uh, connections aren't just never. It sounds like a great story, but yeah. I don't. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether that is indeed a fact because okay. uh, we recorded that album in uh, in Toronto. Okay. And uh, nothing to do with Winnipeg. Um, we did some record. We did a lot of. We did a lot of uh, um, demos, and we did an album. Finally, drugstore dancer in Winnipeg, oh, but the others were done in Toronto and uh, L.A. So um, okay. I don't remember that. Okay, um, just one of those it, sad stories. That I was sounds remember. to me like it could be a goofball story. Yeah. Sounds to me like wow, uh, maybe it was. Uh, yeah. But I think something like that I might remember. Yeah. Well, the other, <laughs> I, I think we should play action because that's just sure. That's I'd love freaking to. It. Yeah, I think you know that that's the that's the first song that was ever played by. A group called Street Heart uh, on radio, and I think it deserves a shot right now. Okay, so that okay. was Action, one of my that, that was Action, one of my all time favorite songs. Um, but I mean, I can name them off right now: Trouble, Action, uh, Hollywood, which I've uh, I don't know if you remember Ray Roper from Stonebolt, but we actually recorded Hollywood. We kind of demoed it for a silly thing, but we were working it. We actually recorded that. Love that one. I get there's so many. But, but, Is that right? Uh, I, no, I didn't know that, but I, I, mean, I know Ray, and uh, oh, I appreciate that. Um, you know, that's that's just uh, probably one of my favorites too. But uh, it doesn't it doesn't uh, compete with action in in my mind. You know. Yeah, yeah. I just they're all but, uh, the greatest hits. That's- Wow. But I like our repertoire. Uh, when we do a, when we do a gig, there's a there's a lot of uh, there's most of the songs are what we call the hits that they've had they've seen radio, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I I really enjoy our set. I have a lot of fun with the set, which I think is great to be able to have fun. Uh, you know, as many years as I've been in the business. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's still fun, still fun to have fun. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, <laughs> full circle, too, with, with one of your biggest cover songs being Under My Thumb, and now your new release is Angie with, uh, I guess, Jeff Neal produced it and Kevin Cherko mixed it, right? Yes, that's right. You got it. That's right. Jeff Neal, who lives in Vancouver, and he's our guitar player, you know. Yeah. Uh, one day, he was, uh, we were in the back of, uh, sitting in the back steps of some club in, in Alberta, and, and he says, Kenny, you should... Uh, you should record. You should. Your your voice is so good. You should uh, choose some songs, and uh, we should record them, and I'll produce it. Mm-hmm. And that was that was the beginning. That was ten years ago, by the way. Wow. So, so I mean, uh, you know, you do a couple of songs, two or three songs, <laughs> then you take three years off. I mean, yeah. that was my style. Mm-hmm. Um, not exactly prolific, but, um, but 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 interesting and important to to state that. Uh, you know, it took a long time, but uh, we took our we took our time. It was so different than working for the record companies, you know, mm-hmm. just so different. Because they say uh, you need an album out by next Tuesday, or they say uh, you know you 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 have to be finished by uh, by Tuesday, and they'll be already doing it. And you just started six weeks ago, so there's stuff like that. There was always seemed to be a pressure, uh, stoic pressure, and uh, I think we we uh, eliminated that by doing uh, the solo album, which is called, by the way, Letting Go. Letting Go, okay. Yeah. And is it all covers? Uh, yes, it is, except for one. Uh, I redid uh, an old uh, street art song, which I wrote um, back in the 80s that never made the album. Okay. So That's- so it's called Want to Be With You. So I figured, well, okay, so it didn't make the album. It made a, a bootleg, but I, I thought, well, I can... I didn't redo it. I just used the two track and and uh I worked with uh it Kevin Cherko. Mm-hmm. Um and and he remix well, he didn't remix it but he re EQ'd it and along with uh a guy named Bart McKay out of Saskatoon. So these are the two guys, these are the two pro pro tools genius that mm-hmm. helped us get through this with the album. Uh and it sounds pretty good. It sounds you know, like I I'm I, I I'm I'm an audiophile all the way, and and I was going wow, like I mean, it's nice to see someone do basically an indie album, but get that quality. And and I, I complimented Jeff on it the other day, and he said, well, I'll like give it to Kevin Cherko too because he he just yeah. incredible. I mean, he he basically cut his teeth with Mutt Lang, right? Like if people don't know, that's right. Yeah, he did. 
He spent three years of mutt lying, just uh, just sorting out all of mutt's uh, files, you know, mm-hmm. in Switzerland. Um, and he got that just by by hook or crook. It's just like a kind of a lucky. Uh, uh, some somebody suggested him to mutt lying, and mutt lying didn't have any any time to review anybody. He just well, we'll get him over here and get him get him to work. Yeah, and uh, boy, that was the best thing that ever happened because he's he's doing very well. He's, he's playing great. With Shania, right? Pardon me. Didn't he? Him and his brother play fish and I, and then and that sort of led to it. Uh, not a, his, his brother does. Oh, okay. His brother plays with Shania, and if not Shania, a uh, Kelly Clarkson. But uh, mm-hmm. he's a great guitar player, and mm-hmm. uh, Shania is, is, of course, is, is his first contract you might say right yeah yeah no uh kevin uh kevin's a producer and that's what well, all he wants to be okay but it, it is a very musical family and they're 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 from moose Shaw, saskatchewan so kevin was a fan and it wasn't difficult for me to convince him that uh to work on my stuff he was that's uh fair. all for it you know sounds so good and the, the second guy i'd really like to fondly mention is bart mckay from from saskatoon mckay studios he is also a very sweet intelligent young man who's uh has got the pro tools in his back pocket wow. so uh the, the remaining five that kevin didn't work on uh he were i worked on with him so it was a uh, quite a quite an affair for all of us like uh, jeff myself and kevin and bart that's a lot of and uh, i think the end product is uh really is really damn good I want to go back to back here because my favorite so far, I, I, again, I, you did the same thing with Angie. You made it your own and took it somewhere. Mm-hmm. And then Lisa loves to love somebody. And do you even remember the Bee Gees version? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll just play those back to back. Okay. 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 So there's some serious music right there. Like, I mean, it, it's as good as it ever was. Mm-hmm. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing How are you doing for band. time there, Kenny? Pardon? How you doing? Oh, I'm doing time? Time. I actually I got I got a, I got a, a few I've got a few more minutes. Okay. okay. Cuz we can just not sorry. not to say not to say I got to go but uh, just a few more minutes. But uh, this is going very well and I thank you. And, and we pretty much. much got to the end there. I, like we've got right to the end. We played the two songs, but it, like I was saying, because I'll just cut this in, I'm really looking forward. Oh, me too. This will be, a, funny enough, the first time I've actually seen you guys live ever, because I've always listened to you, but I never seen No seen kidding. You. Yeah, yeah. So God, I thought uh, everybody's seen us by now. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I mean, I never, uh, I, I never saw a lot of bands, because I was out mm-hmm. there doing it too, and, and I don't know, you Yeah. you did and you didn't. Yeah, oh, I, I I I can relate to that. You know, yeah. when you're playing and you're on the road and you're playing six nights a week or whatever, you don't have time, and nor do you want to take your day off to go see bands. And and nor do you have the money to pay for the ticket when you're. Busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true hoping, too. We're always hoping for a free this and free that, and that this road will get you. In. <laughs> well, listen, I really appreciate talking to you two, and uh, Kevin. Well, Obviously, you you know quite a bit about what's the, what's going on with uh, Kenny Shields and uh, both of you, and it's, it's very sweet. And I, I I I I'm very grateful for the the Maybe opportunity get, to, yeah. to talk to you Maybe both. Get your concert. Yeah, we'll come and, uh, Yeah, we'll see you December December sixth. Oh yeah, the let's, Bell let's Center. Do a plug for that. So December sixth, Kenny Shields and Streetheart at the Bell Performing Arts Center in Surrey, which is a really nice venue. I, I've been there. They haven't done a ton of shows there, but it's a really nice venue. So the address, well, well that, then I look forward to that. That's, yeah, you'll that like sounds it. It's great. a beautiful place. It's uh, 6250144th Street in Surrey, and the box office number is 604-507-6355. I don't know if there's still tickets or whatever, but get yourself some tickets and get down there and see Kenny Shields. And Yay. if you care, you can see Lisa Freecroft, too. <laughs> I'll be there. All right. She's All right. Well, well, listen... You got you know a lot of information that I don't, so I look forward to meeting you guys. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, we look forward to meeting you. Thanks so much, Kenny. It was an my honor. pleasure. My 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 indeed pleasure. Thank you. Okay, Thank you very bye. much. Bye. Bye. bye.